The Shakespeare Authorship The Outrageous Failure of Stratfordianism The Shakespeare Authorship Question Whether William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon truly wrote the works attributed to him has remained a contentious debate since the beginning 400 years ago for centuries. Stratfordianism, the mainstream belief that a glover's son from a small English town wrote some of the greatest works in world literature, is riddled with contradictions and gaps. While it endures due to tradition and institutional inertia, a closer look at the evidence, or lack thereof, exposes the theory's profound weaknesses. These flaws become even more apparent when contextual examples from Shakespeare's works are examined. Stratfordianism fails not only as an explanation for the origin of these masterpieces, but also as a coherent narrative of history. A man without credentials. The problem of knowledge. One of the most striking weaknesses of Stratfordianism is the disconnect between William Shakespeare's documented background and the extraordinary knowledge displayed in his works. The Shakespearean canon demonstrates mastery of an array of disciplines including law, medicine, astronomy, navigation, classical mythology, history and foreign languages. For example, the Merchant of Venice includes legal proceedings in the trial of Antonio, specifically the concept of a pound of flesh and arguments about legal contracts. The intricate understanding of legal principles suggests the author was not merely familiar with the law, but deeply trained in its nuances. This is far beyond what a grammar school education or even casual observation could provide. Othello demonstrates detailed knowledge of military strategy and naval operations. The Venetian setting, with its emphasis on military command and geography, strongly suggests first-hand knowledge of Italy and its socio-political structure, something Shakespeare of Stratford, who never travelled abroad, could not have experienced. Hamlet references advanced Renaissance philosophical debates on mortality and existence, drawing heavily on sources like Montaigne and classical Greek philosophy. It also includes detailed court protocols, such as the fencing match, which reflect aristocratic customs unfamiliar to the average Elizabethan. These examples showcase an author deeply embedded in aristocratic and intellectual culture. Yet William Shakespeare of Stratford's life offers no evidence that he had access to these domains. He was a man of business, not letters, a fact underscored by his later life as a property investor and grain dealer. The silence of the Stratford man. Another contextual inconsistency is the absence of any documented interaction between William Shakespeare and other literary figures of his time. While Ben Jonson, Christopher Marlowe, Edmund Spencer and Sir Philip Sidney are frequently mentioned in letters, tributes and public records, no contemporary sources link Shakespeare of Stratford to the vibrant literary culture of London. Contrast this with Jonson, who was recognised in his lifetime and engaged in numerous literary feuds and collaborations. When Johnson wrote Volpone, his contemporaries celebrated his achievement. In stark contrast, the man purportedly responsible for King Lear, arguably the greatest tragedy in English literature, died in 1616 without a single poetic eulogy or public acknowledgement of his literary contributions. Even the epitaph on his grave in Stratford-upon-Avon is bafflingly mundane, containing no reference to his achievements as a playwright or poet. This omission is particularly glaring when compared to the effusive tributes for Sidney, whose death in 1586 inspired an outpouring of national grief. Specific contexts, foreign settings and aristocratic detail. Shakespeare's works are replete with foreign settings and aristocratic concerns, further complicating the Stratfordian narrative. For instance, the two gentlemen of Verona depicts a boat journey between Verona and Milan, despite the fact that both cities are landlocked. This geographical inaccuracy suggests the author had read maps of Italy, but had not travelled there himself. 
While Stratfordians argue that Shakespeare's imagination filled in the gaps, other works display remarkably accurate cultural and legal details implying first-hand knowledge. Measure for Measure demonstrates an intimate understanding of Viennese governance and Roman Catholic doctrine, unusual for an English Protestant. The play's portrayal of legal systems, monasteries and corruption in high places suggests the author's personal experience or access to extensive research unavailable in rural Stratford. These examples of detailed settings and nuanced descriptions point to an author with direct exposure to European courts and aristocratic life, far removed from the provincial upbringing of Shakespeare of Stratford. The Problematic Will William Shakespeare's will, written shortly before his death in 1616, is another critical piece of evidence that undermines the Stratfordian position. The document is mundane, listing property, financial bequests, and a second best bed for his wife. There is no mention of books, manuscripts, or other items that might indicate an intellectual legacy. This omission is particularly striking when one considers the prolific nature of Shakespeare's works. Where are the drafts of Hamlet, the annotated folios of source materials for Henry V, or correspondence with theatre companies? In contrast, Ben Jonson's papers include drafts, letters, and intellectual musings, as one might expect from an active playwright. The absence of such materials in Shakespeare's estate raises a profound question. How could the greatest writer in English leave no evidence of his creative process? Alternative Candidates Contextualizing the Genius The failure of Stratfordianism becomes even more apparent when alternative authorship candidates are considered. Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, emerges as a compelling figure due to his education, aristocratic background and documented travels. De Vere spent time in Italy offering a plausible explanation for the intimate Italian details found in Othello, The Merchant of Venice and The Taming of the Shrew. Consider Hamlet. The play's exploration of familial betrayal, courtly intrigue and existential philosophy resonates strongly with de Vere's own experiences as a courtier navigating the treacherous waters of Elizabethan politics. De Vere's correspondence and poetry reveal a mind deeply preoccupied with themes that parallel Shakespeare's works. Another candidate, Francis Bacon, provides a plausible alternative for the legal and philosophical expertise evident in the plays. Bacon's groundbreaking essays and legal writings mirror the structured logic and rhetorical brilliance of Julius Caesar and Measure for Measure. Conclusion Stratfordianism's failure is not merely academic. It is a failure to honour the true origins of the Shakespearean canon. The inconsistencies in the Stratfordian narrative, combined with the contextual evidence from the plays and poems, make it clear that William Shakespeare of Stratford could not have authored these works. The absence of biographical evidence, the disconnect between the author's knowledge and the Stratford man's life, and the compelling cases for alternative candidates all point to the inadequacy of Stratfordianism. The works attributed to Shakespeare are too profound, too intricate, and too deeply rooted in aristocratic and intellectual culture to be the product of a man with no documented access to those realms. By clinging to the Stratfordian myth, we obscure the truth about one of history's greatest literary achievements. It is time to confront the outrageous failure of Stratfordianism and seek the true genius behind the Shakespearean legacy. It remains a blind spot that the global academic Shakespearean elite has neither recognized nor acknowledged the existence of a Shakespeare authorship problem. A powerful orthodoxy has solidified, reinforced by cultural prestige and scholarly consensus, making it difficult to consider alternative theories without jeopardizing professional credibility. As a result, serious inquiry into the authorship question has been marginalized, 
often dismissed as conspiracy or heresy rather than subjected to rigorous academic investigation.